thank you for your goodness and your love and your mercy and your grace that is directed constantly and consistently towards us. Thank you because we are objects of your grace and goodness yet again today. I want to appreciate you for the four months gone by and this very fifth month and the fifth day of it that has now come. It is a sign that greater and mightier things is to come still for the year. We are grateful, Father. We have come to present ourselves as sons and daughters of yours. Do what you alone can do in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Receive praise, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we celebrate the Lord with a shout? Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the Lord with a shout? Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, please have, let's have our seats. Let's have our seats. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thanks to the ushers. Amen. Praise Jesus. Thanks to the ushers and the choristers and every minister in this place. Amen. That makes this machine to keep moving on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The technical crew, the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. The cleaners, the Lord bless you. The follow-up team, the prayer department, every one of you. Evangelism will love you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy New Month once again. Praise God. Always a joy to be with you. Amen. Amen. Please greet someone by your side and wish the person a happy new month. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Find something nice to compliment about the person. You should, you should not wait for me to have to tell you. Amen. You should be used to it now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is something to give. There is what? Some of you, it's now you realize you have a phone. You're looking into your phone like, you know, Salvation will come from there. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Give someone something. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you didn't receive a compliment now? You didn't receive. Who didn't receive? Let me see your hand. Lift your hand up. You didn't receive a compliment. You didn't receive, right? That's because you didn't give or you gave and you didn't get back. You gave, but you didn't get. You didn't give. You see now. Praise the Lord. When you don't give, you don't get. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell me what you are looking for. Looking for? Give, it give it first. And you get it too. Get it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Life is really simple. <sighs> Pastor Zaya, please give her something. Give her something. She's missing something. Give her a compliment. Mr. Yasmin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He stood upon his watch yes, and looked and checked, what will I see? And he saw pretty. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. I want to begin by thanking every one of you for your celebrations. Um, um, four days ago or five days ago now, of my birthday, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your wishes. Thank you for your participation. The dances and everything you guys did, I really appreciate it. God bless you. I can't thank you enough. Amen. Um, thank you for the gifts, um, the huge, gigantic cake. Amen. Amen. That is beyond me. Amen. Amen. I used to be able to, I used to love cakes a lot. And I used to eat cakes, but this one was beyond my level. So like I promised on Friday, we brought it back to church. After service, it would be served to you guys. Praise the Lord. And that was the last instruction I was giving Pastor Gibson to tell them to make sure they just cut it to portions so that everyone will go home with something. Praise the Lord. I um, also want to appreciate every pastor and every person who took part to make, sure, make it very uh, possible for, for that um, occasion. And um, those who celebrated, not just me, but all those born in the month of May, um, and those whose birthday have already been, and those whose birthday are to come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whose birthday is it today? Huh? Say it. Pastor Richmond, yeah? Uh, I know somebody's birthday is on the 5th. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless him where he is. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
one of our pastors birthday is is on the fifth and i'm sure he's celebrating somewhere today and i know we'll have some birthdays tomorrow and then several of them just keep piling up this whole month praise the lord you both should take may bonds out we give you a lot of holidays i'm told we are giving you another holiday this this month amen just spoil us a little amen there are birthdays and then there are birthdays are you responding like you're envious Praise God. We still have our wonderful sister all the way from Kiev, Sister Paloma. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. She chose to celebrate this, this um, Easter break with us, and it's a beautiful thing. She's been here for almost a week. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Join me to celebrate our wonderful Pastor Gibson and his <laughs> beautiful wife. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Vic, are you envious? Why are you not celebrating? Let me see the envious people in this church. Are you envious? Praise the Lord. Pastor Engineer Isaiah. Pastor Emmanuel. Pastor Phoebe, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's please have our seats. Amen. Amen. She didn't expect it. Hallelujah. Genesis 15 from the fourth verse. This month, like I announced on uh, Friday, God has said it's a month as what? It's a month as what? Amen. Amen. So like a lion, the people shall rise. Amen. Amen. We have a teaching we already sent forth from um, Friday, which I recommend you see um, in case you missed that service. You want to watch it. It's connected to every other thing we'll be doing this month. Today we are not teaching on anything connected um, with our status or with the principles we can learn from the life of a lion. Today we want to look at something different. In our Sunday teachings this month, we're going to be looking at how to deal with setbacks. How to deal with what? Setbacks Setbacks and challenges. Amen. Um, A lot of people enter into Christianity and somehow with the teachings and um, the excitement and the faith that we teach many times think every time means um, things the journey is going to be all rosy. I want to show you that it is not always going to be rosy. Amen. Amen. It is not what? Always. It's not always going to be rosy. There are going to be days of challenges. There are going to be days of obstacles. Jesus never promised his disciples a hitch free ride. And one of the reasons why Christians sometimes pull back and um, draw back and um, quit and start asking questions, you know, and start um, doubting their own salvation or doubting the presence of God in their life is because they have a um, they have a preconceived ideology of how the journey is supposed to be. If you see a man who is standing today, for example, if you say, oh, pastor, you have strong faith. You know, I could never go through that. It is not because we were not always like that. Am I talking to somebody? We went through a process. We were refined. If you see any man who is very successful today or who is very victorious, it is because of the number of times he has failed. Amen. Amen. I have known challenges. I have eaten them. Praise the Lord. I have slept and woken up challenged. I have preached challenged. Amen. I have preached great sermons that blessed other people. Whereas I myself was challenged, so to say. Praise the Lord. From verse 4. I'll continue after we read the verses. Genesis 15 from verse 4. So my message is titled, Dealing with Setbacks. Amen. Dealing with what? Dealing with setbacks. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, Abraham, saying, This shall not be thine hair, 
but he that shall come forth out of thine own boils shall be thine hair. Praise the Lord. Every time we quickly jump to the fact that Abraham obtained a child from God by faith, what we forget is it was a process. Anyway, it was a process. So it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in the first year of his salvation. Amen. The word of the Lord came to him. God is still assuring him. There are times in your walk with God where God, the first thing you will be getting will be assurance. Tell me about assurance. assurance. Amen. And you'll receive that assurance for a long time. He will keep on giving you hope. He will keep on telling you, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Sometimes he will even go ahead and tell you, I've already done it. And there you are, you are so confident. God's done it. I mean, everything's going to be perfect. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to... And then you wake up tomorrow morning, it's the problem is still there. It's important we have this idea that in my ministry, nobody ever prepared me for this kind of faith. Well, it seemed as though it was always going to be from glory to glory to glory from, you know, just keep going high. Nobody told me that there's going to be days when you go low before you go high. Am I not going to somebody? So, um, there's, there's a reason why I have chosen that this is what we'll be teaching on, Wednesdays, on Sundays, rather, because of the relevance and how applicable it is to every one of us. Every one of us. If Jesus had not prepared Peter for how to get himself back, when Peter denied Jesus three times, which Peter was sure he was never going to do, 100% Peter was sure. To the point he said, if everybody else deny you, I will never deny you. If it is for us to die, I am ready to die for you. Within a space of how many minutes, Peter had denied Jesus three times before the cock crowed twice. You'll be shocked by the words Peter said. Peter said, I don't know him. In fact, I've never known him. You wonder, is he not the same Peter? So Jesus had told him something. He, says, he said, the devil desired to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. And when you get yourself back, so, so you see, Jesus gave him hope that there was going to be a second chance. Tell anybody there's going to be a second chance. Tell anybody there's going to be a second chance. Is it, tell anybody, if second chance is not enough, there's going to be a third one. If the third one is not enough, there's going to be a fourth one. But you're not allowed to stay defeated. Praise the Lord. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be your hair. This is not going to be your child. But he that shall come forth out of your, your own boils shall be thine heir. Five Please. And he brought him forth abroad. God brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, unto him, So shall your seed be. God is trying to get his perspective. Tell him, many times when you're going through challenge, you just need to change your perspective. You know, many times I, when I counsel people and I see people going through things, our eyes and our focus is so much on the problem, that's why we many times are defeated by the problem. You think God will be telling him right now, you know, you know just, just, just focus right now. You know, just, just focus on how you're going to make a baby very well. Just focus. Give it your best attention. Next time, give it your best try. I know God brought him and said, look, just look up. Tell anybody the solution is up there. He said, I look to the hills from whence comes my help. Praise the Lord. My help cometh from where? So God brought, God had to change his attention. His focus was give me a child, give me a child, give me a child, give me a child. I need a heir. I need a heir. And God is like, uh uh, come. You are looking too small. Your vision is too narrow minded. I want to change how you see things. He said, look now toward heaven. Oh God, what are you saying? How will this change things now? How will this bring a baby now? He said, look towards heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto, the, said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Praise the Lord. Tell anybody, change your perspective. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. Amen. 
Just because you're in a problem doesn't mean you, the problem has to be in you. Amen? Just because you're in a problem doesn't mean you have to allow the problem what? To be in you. And if you don't want the problem to be in you, you've got to change how you think, how you see things, how you appreciate the things which God is already doing and the things that he can do still. He may not have, he may not have done it yet, what you are hoping for, but you know he can. And you have your vision stayed on that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Six quickly, six quickly. And he believed in the Lord. He what? He believed in the Lord. So what was really happening um, all these times when Abraham left his father's house? What was happening all these years when he kept on asking God for a child, for a child, for a child, up until this point? For the first time, God says he believed in the Lord. And it was on this occasion that it, became, it, it was counted for him as righteousness. Just because you are hearing and just because you are attending services and you are coming to church and you are making confessions does not necessarily mean you have believed yet. Am I talking to somebody? A day comes and an hour comes when everything just gel up together and makes sense. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, it's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. That's the day everything changes. Suddenly, God is like, yeah, that's, that's the day we did it. That's the day you got it, finally. I've been saying these things, but you didn't hear it. Amen. May your day of believing be even this month. Somewhere this month. May it be your day of believing. Amen. You know when someone says, you know, you know I'm a king. I'm a king. Every time in church, I know who I am. And sometimes we make, we be make, we just be making confessions and making, sorry to say, noise, you know. And we keep saying things, just keep saying things because we, we hear other people say it or because we know it's in the Bible. A day comes where you don't say it. Huh? You don't even have to say it. You now believe it. A new level of force lives inside of you. It changes the decisions you make and the way you think. For the first time, Abraham believed. All this while, he was walking in unbelief. You know how many people pray in unbelief? And yet they are saying they believe. Father, I believe. I believe you will do it for me. Father, I believe you do it for me. After I finish praying. Father, when will you do it for me? Hallelujah. Quickly, the next verse. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit. And meanwhile, at this point, when God is speaking this to him, he hadn't inherited the land. Tell anybody, there's a process. I really want to talk to folks today as really things are. And I don't mean to discourage you, but I want you to, be, to have a balanced knowledge of all things. There are some things and some journeys and some uh, prayer points that may take you years. Do you realize we're talking about a man who waited for 25 years? Tell me about 25 years. 25 years of the promise, not 25 years of his life. It, it, it was not until he became 100 he didn't get his child. 100 years. You know what 100 years is? What makes a man to not give up hope from year one to when he becomes 75? What makes a man at 75 decide to finally walk with God at 75? What makes a man hold on for 25 years? I'm saying this because I see some believers who are so quick at quitting. If, if you try God, if, I, if you try God and God doesn't work, one, I mean in your own mind, one, two, three months or weeks, 
or yes, you like no this in this in the stuff. Don't let short term mentality ruin you. Am I might talking to somebody. I don't know about you, but I want long term prosperity. Amen. I want what? I want generational prosperity. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't mind being broke now. Huh? I don't mind being broke now, even if it's for the next 25 years. Hmm? If my generation, for the next 1,000 years, are going to be rich and more. I ain't a short-term thinker. That was what we, who Abraham was. Abraham was ready for, to just allow me to say, invest his 25 years into God for something he was looking to. Tell me, I'm going somewhere. Say, I'm in this thing for the long run. For the long run. Hallelujah. My God. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Next, quickly. He's asking God a question. And he said unto him, take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He, he got into a place of sacrifice. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece, one against another. But the birds divided he not. Next. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. 12. This is the key part. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. God had just gave him a promise. Please, watch this. Every time God gives you a promise, his promise is telling you what he will do. His promise is not telling you all that will happen. Am I talking to somebody? I'll show you some other verses to help you get it. Go quickly to 13. It elaborates it. 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a shorty that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. God is beginning to tell him, nah, you know, I, I don't want to kid with you. A time's going to come, things are going to get bad. Your guys, your, your children, they are going to be slaves. Your descendants are going to suffer. A time is coming. And you've got to know this before time. There is going to be a season of setback. Am I talking to someone? Now, please don't misunderstand. It's the, 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 there, is no, there is no such assurance or promise that it is going to happen for sure, that there is going to be a setback. But it is better we prepare you just in case it happens. If it happens. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The plan is not to divorce. Huh? When you go into a marriage, the plan is not to what? But what happens when things go south? When the once, once loving home suddenly becomes a living hell. When the once promising husband is not the one threatening your existence. The same one who swore before God to protect you is not the one telling you he will kill you before this year end. What happens? Um, sister, you are not allowed to divorce. God is against divorce. Remember you swore before the whole church. You people will live in it together. Just keep praying that it will not kill you. <laughs> Nonsense. Nonsense. You've got to prepare God's people just in case things go, go haywire. There's nobody whose desire it is to divorce. 
But what happens when things go wrong? God is telling him, you see, I want you to know of a certainty. It's not a guesswork. I want you to know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. They will be slaves to them. What happens? Well, how should I deal with a situation? I raised up my child well. I, you know, this child saw everything that, you know, um, he saw a good example. Had a good father, had a good mother, exemplary people. Come from a good home, wealthy home. He doesn't lack anything. But you can't believe it yourself when they, show you, when they are showing you on CCTV how your child is stealing. Tell you things are moving in boarding school. See, it's not possible. It's not possible. My child can't do that. What do, how do I deal with such a situation? How do I deal with my child at such a time? How do I position myself to be relevant so that my child can go through the process and we can come out both victorious? What do I do when there are setbacks? He said, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. They're going to be in slavery and there's going to be a season of setback. It's not going to be because they are not children of God anymore. They are still Christians. They are still believers. They are still praying. They are still fasting. They are still studying. They still look to Jehovah. But things are just not going the way they're supposed to. What happens at such moments? They didn't intermarry with the Egyptians. They were not guilty of idolatry at the point. But still they are under slavery. What happens at such moments? When you are a good Christian, you are praying, you are prayerful, you are living the holy life, you are doing everything possible, but you are not seeing results. What happens at such a moment? What do I do? That's why we brought the message. Amen. Amen. Fourteen quickly. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with what? You see that? Every time God gives you a promise, many times he speaks of the end, not the process. Am I talking to somebody? Do not mistake the end for the process. It's like someone telling you, you know, okay, so I'm, I'm going to buy you a shoe. There's a process to buying the shoe. Well, these days we have online means of ordering things. But in those days, you'd have to go out of your house. You'd have to go to a marketplace. You have to do something to see the results you want. There's a process. There may be hold up. Say, so, but where is the shoe now? Where is the shoe? Where is the shoe? Where is the shoe? I have an event. Where is the shoe? And I was hoping on this your shoe. Tell anybody be patient. Yeah. Matthew 24, verse 13. Matthew 24, verse 13. Matthew 24, verse what? Tap your neighbor if they are sleeping. Just check them once in a while. Amen. They're snoring uh, quietly close to you. Just tap them. Amen. Be kind. Praise the Lord. Some of you are sleeping with your eyes open. <laughs> I can see you. Praise God. I want you to look at this verse. It says, He that shall endure, where? The same shall be saved. The reward is for the end. The promise is for what? An appointed end. The vision is for an appointed end. The process was not told you. You got to get that in your mind. Amen. I'm a child of God. I cannot be sick. Everything with me is perfect. I'll never be sick. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Until we come and greet you in the hospital bed. Oh. 
a hospital bed and you are shocked. <laughs> How did I get here? You call ambulance yourself. <laughs> you were the one that said, please call ambulance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What happens at such moments? How do you bounce back? Your confessions change. You no longer tell anybody you cannot be sick. Because now they know you can be sick. You were more shocked than everybody else. You have not forgiven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tell anybody there's a process. You build your faith over time. You what? And let me say this quickly, just for your benefit. Um, uh, it's, this is out of the teaching, but um, it will help you. Amen. It is what? Out of the teaching, but what? So this part is in um, brackets. If you, if, you, if, you, if you come from the kind of homes which I think most Africans come from, you know your parents are very smart people. Right? They're very smart. When they were students, they were the best in their class. Every one of them. Is that true or not? Till today you can't see their result. <laughs> they use mouth to say it. <laughs> just bring result, Dad. Can we just see result, please? <laughs> you know. <sighs> and he, your dad will tell you, most times your parents, dad or mom, or people that are higher than you, many times will tell you how perfect everything is for them. Hmm? Tell them, but don't be fooled. Just learn. Say, so don't be fooled. Just learn. As I, as, I, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I grow higher in life and see people and meet with some group of people and other things, the one thing I've learned is that most people only speak of their successes. They never talk of their failures. Not because they don't have, one, have failures. I want to know somebody. Please hear this. Most people only show you their successes. And they build a life or a career around their successes. And say nothing about their failures. Please, this is very important. I say don't be fooled. Only what? You know what that means? You to learn to build your life around your successes. Are you listening to me? Around your successes. And you see, the more you focus on your successes, the more minimal, the more irrelevant, the more inconsequential will be your failures. Am I thinking somebody? For example, there are some of our ladies here who um, you know you are very endowed with what we call waste. Hmm? Yes, sir. I didn't know it was a lady. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. And there are many other things which if you pay attention to, you know you don't have. Yeah. Eh? I said, don't be foolish. Hmm? Only what? Focus on what you got going for you. Are you in this church or have you gone home? There are some of you, all you may have, eh? all you may have may be height.
Use it well. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Where 